Okay, so we are ready to start. Can you please close the doors? And our first talk is from Torkel Udegaard. He's talking about Grafana and the uh, um, future of metrics visualization. It's your turn. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, let's see. Sorry about that. Um, my VGA to uh, HDMI uh, converter, I forgot it at the conference I, I was at last, so I didn't have it. Um, so I have to do this on my Mac. Uh, so, uh, so uh, which means that the demos has to be done uh, on this uh, live demo site. So depending on the Wi-Fi, the demo is, might be a little bit shaky. So um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, uh, let's see. Uh, presentation mode. So yeah, uh, I'm here to talk about Grafana, uh, uh, which is an open source tool that uh, I created uh, two years ago. Um, and uh, before we begin, I'm going to just introduce myself. My name is Torkel Ödegård. Uh, I'm from Sweden. I live and work in Stockholm. Uh, my Twitter handle is uh, Torkelo. Uh, I work uh, for a company called Rain Tank. I'm also uh, the founder of Rain Tank. Um, or co-founder of Rain Tank. Um, so this is a company behind Grafana, which we're trying to monetize uh, this open source project, uh, uh, building a, a, a SaaS platform, a SaaS monitoring platform that is built on open source tools. Uh, so um, yeah, that's Rain Tank. We're also trying to sort of monetize Grafana by sort of building support services around it. Uh, but our, our main goal is building a SaaS uh, platform as well. So, uh, what is Grafana? Um, uh, just uh, uh, would be interesting to know uh, how many here use Grafana, or uh, oh, quite a quite a few. <laughs> that's that's really really great. Uh, so, so the first uh, part of this talk is just going to be sort of my vision, of sort of uh, why I built Grafana, what kind of problem did it solve for me, and and uh, uh, where it's heading in the future as well. Um, but. Um, so uh, for those who haven't used Grafana before or, or know of it, it's, it's uh, all about time series visualization. So uh, the main, main use case is, is, of course, sort of monitoring, um, but uh, uh, also application metrics, just gaining insight into sort of what, what your application is doing in production, uh, business metrics, everything that, <laughs> everything that is a time series. or. Uh, so the main use cases, uh, maybe 30%, 20% infrastructure monitoring, 20, 30% application metrics. But then there's this sort of really great usage that people use for industrial sensors, home automation, weather, process control. Some guy built a, a site to monitor bike availability in Calgary for so public bikes. And someone in, in Japan built a site to um, public dashboards that show sort of how the, the queues for, for hospitals in, in, in Japan. So that's, there's sort of all range of, of, of use cases. Uh, and it kind of looks like this. There, you build these dashboards with uh, uh, panels and arrange the panels in different configurations. Uh, uh, mainly graph, uh, there's a, there, there are a couple of different panel types, but the main panel is, is a graph panel that provides very rich support for, for different graphing uh, uh, options. So uh, why did I build this tool and sort of why, why what, what uh, itch did it scratch? Uh, so, I mean, for me, I, I, I'm a developer. I come from this sort of agile and test-driven development movement uh, that are really passionate about quality code and sort of being productive in, in large development teams. Um, that later turned into a real passion about something I called continuous delivery and microservices. Uh, and this was... Um, uh, uh, continuous delivery is all, all about sort of being able to deploy to production sort of every time. Uh, sort of, uh, as often as possible, multiple times per day. And to, in order to, uh, to do that, one solution is to have microservices because that allows you to sort of deploy to production multi uh, all the time without maybe causing too much uh, of a disturbance. Microservices are also great for, so if you have a large development, uh, uh, many teams, you can split your development uh, resources into small teams that all sort of work on different services. But <laughs> both of these things can sort of uh, create problems for monitoring. Um, and uh, so one, uh, someone called uh, Adrian Cockcroft uh, termed this 
phrase called Death Star Architecture. And this is the architecture uh, dependency diagram for Netflix. There's an equal one, a sim no, 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 this is for Twitter. Uh, there's an equal one for Netflix that looks sort of like a Death Star. And all the uh, sort of names on the circle is uh, different services and all the lines are dependencies between different components. Uh, and it sort of creates this enormously complex mess. And you can imagine sort of monitoring a system where all these different services are constantly being deployed multiple times per day and there are changes. So this trend sort of on, on both creating more complex distributed systems and deploying all the time creates, of course, a very sort of uh, ever-increasing need for observability. observability. Uh, and this is sort of the main key, key thing that drove me into this, into the monitoring space. Uh, I wanted to know what was going on in production with my applications and sort of know, understanding how the, what they were doing, what the performance bottlenecks are, and also what sort of the users of the system were doing. Um, and one great thing, to, sort of tool, in order to gain observability is time series databases. Uh, and I mean, I'm not sh might be preaching to the choir here at the monitoring conference. So, uh, but time series databases are really great purpose-built systems for for measuring things, and they have a purpose-built write and query API designed just for sort of measurements. Uh, a popular uh, and very old project in, uh, in this space is Graphite, uh, which is a project I really love, but it, it really captures the idea around a purpose-built database um, because it, it has this very ex extremely simple write API where you so only send it a metric key, a value, and a timestamp. Uh, this is the sort of, you, you can open a TCP or UDP uh, packet and send, send this as a plain, plain string. And so, incredibly simple write API. And that sort of enabled this uh, very sort of large ecosystem of tools that can write metrics to Graphite or uh, other servers that have com compatible sort of APIs. Because since it's so simple, many other databases also uh, uh, support this uh, write API. Uh, but uh, Graphite also, so what's great about uh, uh, Graphite and other time series databases is that it allows you to then very easily query data and visualize it. Um, so you might specify the, query, the, the metric key and a wildcard, uh, but you can also then transform and do some complex more sort of metric analytics on those metric, uh, on those me measurements, wrapping the expression in functions or scaling them. This is sort of scaling a number of series. As there's a wild card, scaling them to seconds, applying a moving average or five minutes. Uh, so you can uh, do all these kinds of transformations. You can uh, even divide a set of series against another set of series, calculate percentages, and sort of do more complex uh, arithmetic, uh, which is great, especially for business metrics and application metrics, where you can uh, maybe want to do more, uh, more transformations on them. Um, you can also time shift metrics, which is really useful if you want to compare how, so, how things are looking right now to how it looked the same time yesterday or the same time last week. Um, so, uh, yeah, graph, I, I love, really love Graphite. Uh, so that's sort of what, what we started using. And um, this, um, is a couple of years ago, uh, Etsy released That's D, which also sort of bootstrapped or uh, kicked off this metrics movement where you should uh, measure everything and that made it they released this tool called StatsD which made it really really easy to instrument your applications for metrics so um, in order in order to get those pretty dashboards yeah you have to sort of invest some time you have to build uh, you have to install a time series database you have to install grafana or uh, and you also have to uh, instrument your application uh, so i mean uh, to me, this is a really important step because monitoring is not about just sort of looking at CPU health or memory. It's about knowing ex what's going on in your application and visualizing their internal state, but also sort of performance bottlenecks and also user behavior. Because the best thing to, to, to monitor uh, is user, how, how your users are using the system. Um, revenue, logins, payments, whatever your users are doing. That's a critical thing to to visualize and monitor. Um, so, but and that starts with instrumentation, and that could be just a sing, simple line like sort of increment a counter. Um, 
but then you and then you can build the dashboards. But uh, the current the state of sort of metric visualization tools uh, a couple of years ago was not that good. Uh, Graphite was one of the better ones uh, in in terms of sort of both a time series database and had features to build dashboards and query these metrics. But the the default dashboard builder and metric query editor was very very bare bones and very uh, made it very hard to write these metric queries because you got this you, you get this very small uh, text field to to edit the queries in uh, and uh, the, the graphs themselves weren 't very interactive you couldn 't zoom in uh, it was very clunky to build this dashboard uh, so uh, when we tried to introduce graphite and instrumentation and in order to gain more observability, we really struggled to get our different development teams to to use this, we, we, it was kind of low adoption. People, I had to push teams to to do this, but they didn't really uh, didn't re feel like felt that they had time to invest to know to learn Graphite or learn the query editor or learn how to build queries and dashboards. Uh, so that was sort of the, the itch I was. Uh, and we looked. There were a ton of different dashboards and sort of tools that can visualize data stored in Graphite, uh, but that was sort of. Uh, but none of them, the alternative dashboards, really solved the problem of some accessibility and ease of use. Um, so uh, that was sort of the itch I was scratching when I started working on Grafana. Uh, and the core thing I wanted to make was make a tool that was more accessible and easier to use. That made sort of the power of, of Graphite more, uh, more, more easier to use, understand the queries. So. Uh, the co one of the sort of things I'm mo most proud of in Grafana is this: uh, how how it makes uh, a, a queries that are can be quite complex. This is still a simple query, um, but it, it turns uh, transform this query into a much more readable format and interactable. So instead of having this small text box with uh, an expression wrapped in a number of function parameters, you get this interactable. Let's see if. Uh, uh, this is a PDF. So, <laughs> uh, the, I had I had uh, the I, I moved the PDF from uh, from my, my Linux. Uh, 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 this is an animated GIF, but that didn't translate. <laughs> so, uh, this is the metric key, and each of uh, I'll show this in the demo later on. Each each segment of the metric key is interactable, so you can click and select, get a drop down. You can add functions as transformations. Uh, so the functions come after the metric key as a series of uh, as a chain of transformation functions. So this is just a way to I sort of wrote, wrote a graphite parser that can actually visualize the metric query in 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 not just this way that that actually sort of transforms and gets the functions after the metric key. Um, anyway, um, one, one, one way to sort of, uh, uh, a word we have coined at Rain Tank is, is sort of a, a, a philosophy for, for Grafana is to democratize metrics, make, uh, make these tools more accessible uh, and easier to use. Uh, and also, uh, one thing that I, I really like, good UX and beautiful UIs. Um, so that this is also sort of one thing I, I wanted to emphasize uh, because it, it's, it really gives, if you have a good looking monitoring tool, it acts like a carrot to people to actually invest the time and instrument their applications and build a dashboard. So it's a really important thing to have something that is a joy to use and that looks good. And this is, a, it, it, when I look at sort of uh, user uh, service of Grafana, this is one of the top rated things that they like about Grafana is that it's, uh, looks good, uh, and a core core. Uh, this is another post that we have for uh, uh, um, uh, don't get in the way of the data, and this was this is also a core tenant. Uh, sort of when I designed Grafana, is building a UI that um, that didn't get in the way of the data. That was very very bare bones in in how it presented metrics. Uh, so the panels don't have any sort of. Uh, move button, delete button, edit buttons, they're very stripped down. Uh, so so uh, there's just a graph uh, tied title. Uh, and in, in order to, to interact with uh, and move panels and edit panels, you have to click the title, title, which is very unintuitive to new users. But once you learn that, it kind of, um, you get over it. Uh, but uh, the focus is, the, in the, is to don't get in the way of the data. and, and, and um, make uh, as beautiful and um, sort of, oh, this looks really white to me. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> there's, a, uh, there's a white theme for non-technical people, but... Uh, <laughs> so, I don't want to... Uh, so the Grafana project, uh, it's still quite young. I mean, uh, the first release was uh, in last January, so it's almost two years. Uh, but in that time, it's grown incredibly. So sort of it's we had uh, 13 major releases, a bunch of minor patch releases as well. It has uh, gained a lot of traction on GitHub. Uh, have a ton of sort of people that bring feedback, help with issues, uh, and. Um, yeah, it's been amazing sort of seeing the response from the monitoring community to this project. It feels like it was really sort of something that people had been missing, a good, a good uh, uh, time series uh, dashboard tool uh, that really emphasized good UX. It was something that sort of <laughs> people had been really uh, waiting for. Uh, so in, in when, uh, when Gra uh, Grafana was released, it was originally targeting only Graphite. But since then, uh, I added a sort of plugin abstraction, and uh, a number of uh, other data sources has been added, either as core supported data, data sources that ship with Grafana, or as external plugins that other companies or other sort of contributors provide. Uh, so uh, in the latest release, uh, Grafana supports uh, not only Graphite, but it supports OpenTSDB, Elasticsearch, CloudWatch, uh, InfluxDB, Prometheus is a new one, uh, which is uh, gaining a lot of popularity as well. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the, the, the sort of the space uh, uh, for time series databases is really blooming now. There are sort of <laughs> being announced new time series databases almost every week, and it seems like there's a lot of interest in uh, in creating efficient ways to to measure as much as possible. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's a really interesting uh, interesting space uh, to be in. Uh, so yeah, that was sort of the, 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 the background a little bit about sort of Grafana and why I created it. Uh, and uh, for those who haven't sort of used it, I kind of want to go th through some some uh, simple demos. Let's see if I have the play site here. So um, as I said before, sort of the um, you build this dashboard composed of panels. You can move panels around. You can resi resize them. Uh, but you can also sort of view them in, in full screen or uh, edit them. And all that interaction, you, you go through a panel menu by clicking the title. So, uh, and um, uh, can increase the font size a little bit. Uh, so, uh, this is the, the, the graphite query editor. So, I mean, um, uh, as I said before, Grafana supports many different data sources. Um, and uh, you can sort of change uh, different data sources uh, down here. And depending on what you choose, you get a different query editor. And I put a lot of effort into making these query editors as sort of easy to use and powerful to expose the, sort of the power of, of, of the time series database in as sort of easy to use way as possible. So um, uh, in this case, we have uh, this is the metric key. We can change, uh, change any part of the metric key. Um, Maybe look at, take it out of that metric, and this is the functions. And uh, if we remove these functions, uh, we can uh, add them again uh, just to see how how that works. Add a moving average. Uh, maybe we want to uh, maybe this is a rate. We want to scale it, scale the rate to seconds, uh, and maybe add an alias function. And uh, to me, this is. A, so much more easier to work with uh, uh, to have the metric key and then ha see how the functions and the function parameters are being applied in a chain. Uh, so compare that to the real query that is being sent to Graphite, where the parameters are sort of uh, on opposite sides to the function, which they correlate to. So, so it's uh, it, ma uh, it makes it a lot more. Uh, pleasant to work uh, and, and understand. So, if you look at an, uh, a dashboard someone else has built, you can actually understand what what uh, what the graphs are showing. Um, so, th that is uh, the graphite query editor, and you also have a lot of sort of flexibility for how how the legend should be shown, what units of, on on the axes, and uh, so it's a, it's a plethora of, of different uh, uh, display uh, options as well, and and, and grid. Uh, Options, and uh, yeah, you can also override the time range. So there is a dashboard time range, like the, this dashboard is showing the last two hours, uh, but um, you can actually 
uh, override, uh, different panels could override that time range. So this, you might want to have a, a dashboard that shows you the last hour or last two hours, but this panel should only show, show you the last day. So you can have sort of a, a panel that shows you last hour, last six hours and last day for the same metric if you want to sort of compare different time ranges on the same dashboard. Um, of course, uh, Graphite has this really useful time shift function that you can also compare different time ranges on the same, uh, same graph. Uh, so uh, just to show you how it looks when you sort of change to a different data source. So if I change to Elasticsearch, uh, we get a different query editor. Uh, so so uh, in this case, uh, 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 it's a for, for Elasticsearch where you can sort of select different kinds of, uh, it, it exposes the features for, for how Elasticsearch works. Uh, I'm not sure if how the, good the Wi-Fi is here. So, but you get sort of auto completion for what fields are available in, in this uh, Elasticsearch index that you have defined. Um, Grafana is uh, actually sort of uh, a multi-tenanted web application that you can install and run for yourself. So you can have sign-ins and different authentication schemes, uh, and you add data sources through the UI or through an API. Um, so yeah. Let's see um, if this will work. Um, yes. So uh, one of the core things that were sort of um, the many missed in the default sort of graphite dashboard and another dashboard uh, for for other time series databases was a way to make generic dashboards. I mean, um, with uh, sort of. It's quite common that you add new servers or remove servers or new applications come along and and you have metrics that are very so that, that follow a very sort of generic structure for all these applications and so you don't want to build a dashboard for each server or for each application uh, when you have some generic use case or generic metrics that you want to visualize so uh, for the default graphite dash, uh, dashboard you have to you have to actually duplicate the dashboard for each in each instance. Uh, but what you can do in Grafana is that you can actually define these variables um, that uh, uh, you can define them and, and specify so th that they should be filled with values from the time series database. So in this case, uh, you specified sort of a, a server variable that sort of specifies that uh, it should be take uh, all, the, all the metric, all the parts of the metric names in this uh, sort of apps dot, and it's using another variable in this case uh, uh, dot, dot wildcard. Uh, while, um, so uh, this will actually contain, if you add a new server, it will be added to this list. Um, and in the actual metric queries, you can use these variables. So you never have to sort of change, instead of spec hard, hardly specifying backend one in this case, you can sp use the server variable and this allows you to then change uh, and all the, all the sort of uh, graphs will change in this dashboard. You can change, uh, in this case, to have two linked variables. So you can change uh, to the site, uh, website uh, and then you get another set of servers. Um, so this is one of the most sort of um, complex but also very sort of popular features in Grafana because it allows uh, users to sort of create generic dashboards that they can reuse for many use cases. Um, and there is an extension of, of this feature. Uh, let's see if I, maybe, uh, where, where you can actually specify uh, that a panel should be repeated for each, uh, so this says a repeat panel uh, based on the server's variable. Uh, so if I pick uh, other values in this uh, server variable, uh, this, that panel will actually be repeated. So you can sort of create a very dynamic dashboard uh, that way. Let's see. So another feature uh, is uh, annotations. Uh, and uh, of course, when you have uh, just graphs and time series, you want, might want to sort of augment that with uh, more rich data, more sort of log 
information or event data uh, example may, might be sort of you want to visualize when uh, you made uh, if infrastructure changes or deployments uh, and that's something you can do with annotations uh, so you specify annotations and annotations can be sort of fetched from a multitude of data sources like graphite influx db elastic search um, and you will get these sort of uh, and this is not showing much information, but you can actually have more sort of rich text in these uh, annotations that show you what exactly was deployed or... Um. Another cool thing uh, that uh, I'm kind of proud of is, uh, it's kind of unique, is that you can actually uh, create a snapshot of uh, either a whole dashboard or a panel and share that uh, uh, with other people who don't have access to your Grafana instance, uh, you can all you can all you can create a local snapshot as well. And what this does is actually captures all the visible data in the dashboard and sort of embeds it uh, into a, a adjacent uh, file that is then pushed to uh, either to your local Grafana server or to a, a public uh, uh, snapshot server where uh, people can actually interact with. Uh, with the dashboard uh, or and the data, but they cannot see any more than sort of what what, what you saw in that. Uh, so uh, this is this snapshot. Uh, if I then sort of zoom out, you can see that there is no more data. Uh, it's only the data that was sort of visible when I did that snapshot. Um, and you can do snapshots of uh, whole dashboards as well. Uh, and uh, you can. Uh, this is also kind of a cool feature, I think, in that uh, uh, if you want to share uh, some, uh, a, a graph on HipChat or Slack or some chat, you can actually get an image uh, of uh, any, any panel can be rendered to a PNG. Uh, and there's an API for this. And there's a sort of integration with HipChat and Slack via Hubot, if anyone know uh, of that tool. So uh, this is also as uh, this is rendered on the Grafana server using PhantomJS, which makes it possible to sort of create a, a graph that looks uh, identical to uh, to what it looks like in the browser, because uh, PhantomJS will just open it uh, on the server side and capture an image of, of the panel. Uh, so that's really powerful as well. Um, uh, and you can also embed iframe and embed panels if you want to. Uh, let's see if I... Um, miss any, any fun things? Uh, InfluxDB uh, is a, a popular, uh, ti uh, one of the more popular time series databases right now, uh, and uh, there's a sort of custom-built core editor uh, for, for uh, InfluxDB as well, where you can specify tag filters and, gr and group by tags. Um, let's see if I. Uh, can go back to the slides. I think I have demoed most of the important things. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can sort of sh shoot. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So, so the the core of Grafana is is is. Power, uh, powerful graphing to, uh, and visualization tools. So, uh, and I've spent a lot of time on sort of on, on making the editors and sort of uh, powerful and easy to use as well. Um, so, so when it comes to sort of uh, uh, summarize Grafana, it's, it's uh, a tool to gain observability uh, into your applications uh, via metrics and time series, and it does that through power. power Power through UX, uh, and uh, w what's really funny when I talk to organizations that have started using Grafana is that, uh, I mean, th th on the on the topic of adoption, they've sort of seen when they use uh, started using this, the the adoption rate for instrumenting applications and building dashboards is just skyrocketing. Uh, before I had to sort of really go to teams to push them to add instrumentation, to build, to, to instrument their ap application and add metrics. But after they sort of saw our team 
and so are dashboards. They, they wanted the same, and it just sort of grew like wildfire uh, in, in this organization. And, and some, soon everyone had two monitors up on the wall and was really passionate about metrics and visualization. So it has this incredible effect of sort of uh, really creating a, a great incentive into sort of adding uh, instrumentation and gaining better observability. And uh, I'm not sure what, sort of what the core thing is, but it, just ha having that visual feedback is, is really important. Um, so uh, the, f the future for the Grafana project is kind of, I mean, uh, I'm, I've been working on Grafana project uh, full time for more than a year. Uh, and it's mainly been me. I've had help from others at Rain Tank, but they're working, we mainly working on the SAS, SAS part of it. Uh, but uh, starting in, in two weeks, uh, I'll be adding one more. Uh, I've been hiring, hiring in Stockholm. So we're going to be, have more resources to spend on Grafana. Uh, and uh, um, we're going to be three next year. So uh, and we're going to spend a lot on alerting because this is the top rated uh, uh, feature in Grafana that. Um, that uh, there is no, no integration with alerting, there's no features for alerting. Um, and uh, we've been sort of, proof of con so making proof of concepts uh, for a number of months on how to integrate alerting into Grafana. And there's a good uh, YouTube video uh, from GrafanaCon uh, that was, we had in New York in October that goes into detail about sort of our thought process uh, around how we we're going to build alerting into Grafana. Um, and uh, the main thing is you're going to be able to set, sort of th set th thresholds uh, visually within your sort of panels, uh, uh, but that's going to be saved to an alerting sort of definition, uh, uh, and we're going to get the opportunity to have different alerting handlers, so you might be able to sort of execute your alerting shakes via Sensu or other handlers, and there's going to be a Grafana handler as well that can uh, execute checks, or you might have something that bridges, and so your alerting rules are executed by Prometheus or Boson. So we're going to have, we're, that's the vision we have at least, that you can set your thresholds and alerting rules in Grafana visually, uh, but have them executed pro, uh, potentially at least by other systems. Um, so, well, then, uh, uh, other things that I'm working on right now is a table panel, uh, uh, and uh, that's been also the top-rated thing to, to visualize just raw logs and data. Uh, and uh, we're also sort of trying to add more uh, more visualizations like histograms and uh, um, uh, pie charts ha uh, is something that people have been requesting for ages, and they don't know that pie charts are really bad. Uh, <laughs> don't use pie chart. Um, yeah, so. Uh, if, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, shoot. We've got a lot of time for questions, about 30 minutes. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, one moment. Yeah. Hello. Um, one question I have is that uh, Graphite has a lot of advanced features like. Um, deviations and all that sorry better um, graphite has a lot of a lot of features like for example um, uh, hold winters forecasting and all that the other backends don't have that at the moment do you plan on adding f uh, advanced features to transform the data inside of Graf uh, grafana uh, so yeah this is a very good question and so one of the things that uh, 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 Graphite has is all these transformation functions like uh, Holt Winters uh, and uh, uh, I mean it has like 40 or 50 uh, functions or more uh, and that, that, this is the thing that I love about Graphite in, in it makes uh, the metric so much more useful when you can transform it uh, in these many ways and this is something that's really lacking in almost all the other time series databases they have very limited ways of uh, transforming series and dividing them by each other, calcul calculating percentages and really doing um, sort of advanced analytics. Uh, so that's the main, uh, almost the main thing that I just love about Graphite is that my metrics are more, so much more useful when I have them in Graphite compared to uh, OpenTSDB or InfluxDB. Um, and um, uh, one thing that I, I, I didn't show you uh, 
is uh, this concept of you can actually combine different data sources on the same graph. So you can switch to uh, a mixed data source, which allows you to, in this case, there's a graphite query, but I could actually add uh, an InfluxDB query here as well uh, and have InfluxDB uh, and, um, and graphite live in, in the same graph. So um, I, I, an idea I have is to, uh, the, the reason there are, are letters for the queries is that for, for graphite you can actually use, do some complex sort of queries, you can do sort of ask, you can add functions that reference another query. Uh, so you can do sort of ask percent and then specify query A. This is not something, so this is not a graphic function feature per se, it's actually just uh, uh, a way to do build complex queries in Grafana. Uh, Grafana will just replace uh, the bracket A with the, the textual representation of of query A before it sends this to graphite. So it's a sort of, um, but um, the, the, the great thing about having the query letters there, there is uh, the, the idea I have is to add functions to other data sources as well. So if you had, let's say, uh, an InfluxDB, uh, InfluxDB query um, and you wanted to transform that somehow you could actually add some, like a Grafana query that you, that you could then sort of reference um, the query A and then sort of uh, maybe scale, uh, scale, uh, scale uh, query A by one or something. Uh, and this would be executed by a Grafana query backend that could sort of query InfluxDB and then do transformations on whatever data source you're using. Um, so like a meta query. Uh, and this would also allow you to sort of combine, sort of s summarize uh, data from one server, uh, from one graphite server, uh, uh, and then uh, summarize data from another graphite server, or take different data sources and do calculations on them. So that, that's a, a, a sort of uh, an idea I have for for how to sort of add 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 these functions to data sources that don't have them. Uh, thank you. That yeah. actually answered the first question. I have another. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, we have um, time. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the second question is built on the first one. Uh, for Holt Winters, um, it has functions so you can, for example, predict for the future based on the previous seven days, how might the next seven days look like? Uh, is there any um, process to allow us to see the future inside of Grafana? Because now it shows now yeah. and backwards. So uh, uh, there's no easy way, I think. Uh, uh, so. Let's see if we can, um, in the, so let's see if we can, um, so if I specify two plus five hours, I think it should work. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, and, and there is a there is a bug as it says still lost twelve hours, uh, but that's fixed in in uh, in master. Uh, so so it, there's no um, a, a super intuitive way or sort of quick way to to. Um, but I, that's also coming. It's a way to add these uh, add custom ranges. Uh, that's something I removed in the last release because I added all these new ranges. Uh, but you can uh, specify now and add. Uh, like uh, five hours or ten hours, if you want to look uh, ten hours into the future. Uh, uh, this is something that is uh, for, for people who use Grafana now and m might not have upgraded to the latest release. Uh, uh, the latest release adds uh, a bunch of new uh, time ranges, like today, which is uh, midnight to midnight, uh, and uh, the day so far, which is sort of midnight to now. Uh, and uh, this week, week to date, this month, this year, and then there are more complex ranges like yesterday, the day before <laughs> yesterday, and this, this day last week, which is kind of interesting if you want to compare today with the same day last week. So yeah, um, any more questions? No. Thank you. One moment.
Uh, hi. Uh, this is not a question. This is more a plea. Yeah. Um, currently, uh, I'm, a, I'm a male user uh, speaking, mat, yeah. something like that. And um, currently, I can't use your discussion mailing list because there is no threat, no e real email threats. Uh, I, I just can't use it. I don't want to use the website because uh, I already have so many websites I have to go to. And so uh, I want to use my email client. So please make this thing happen, make it work, somehow. Well, what's the problem with the mailing list? Uh, the mail IDs got mixed up, and so you, ca you don't have a real thread view okay. for the discussions. That's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question at the moment? Okay, here. Uh, you spoke about the uh, uh, snapshot function, and uh, I have a question about this topic. Um, can I? Uh, and you spoke about the R API, and can I use this feature for generating monthly or daily um, uh, snapshots, and can send it via email through a Bash script or something like this? Is it a dynamically uh, method for uh, creating these snapshots? Uh, so yeah, uh, if I look at the the, the, the snapshots uh, uh, that capture all the visible data uh, and will give you a read-only view of, of, of the data. Um, uh, currently, that uh, uh, you have to sort of uh, use a browser to to do that because. Uh, uh, the, the, the logic for how a snapshot is built is in the browser because uh, all the panels will save their visible data and it will create a, a dashboard with the data embedded into it and that will be saved. So, but you could, if you want to sort of build monthly, uh, sort of capture all the data of this dashboard, let's say, uh, and, um, and, autom uh, and do this monthly and, uh, because the, the snapshot you get is locked in time, so it's, it can be sort of sta saved for, forever, and it will uh, forever look the same. Um, so, if I, like I said before, if I zoom out, you'll see that there is no data outside the, the, the range. Um, so, uh, you will have to do this, automate this. You will have to sort of write some browser automation that sort of because uh, all the snapshotting itself needs to do, be done in the browser because all the panels needs to do their thing and capture the data. Um, so uh, th there's no just pure con sort of terminal line uh, or uh, console command line uh, program uh, way to do this just via the HTTP API. You need a browser. Uh, but if you have a browser and some browser automation, you could, you could automate it. Okay, also the image rendering engine, I uh, can't uh, dynamically fill the dates or something like this? Well, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, uh, for, for the, for the uh, image generation you can, uh, everything is uh, specified in the URL. So if I zoom into a specific sort of region here uh, and uh, want to generate uh, an image for this, uh, everything is specified in the URL, it's uh, sort of it's specified uh, the time range, uh, and uh, the sort of how how big the image should be. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And and the image is not created in the browser. It's generated on on your yeah on the yeah, server. So, so this is this okay. uh, this this is actually something you can use from the command line. Or I mean, it's a, uh, it's just an HTTP call, and you will get an image back. Okay. Thank you very much. So we've still got a lot of time. So, okay. Uh, hello. Uh, one amendment to his question. Um, I already built a uh, some kind of script that uses the RP to build actually uh, snapshots. If this is something that uh, would be worth uh, spreading. Uh, then uh, I can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I uh, uh, have a look if I can? Uh, yeah, uh, send send that to, to an email or t uh, tweet it, and uh, I can spread the link as well. Uh. Okay. <laughs> no. 
Okay. Over here. Hi, Thomas here. I'm using Graphit a lot, but I'm still one of those still telling people, please, if you do not want to waste time, use RDs. They work. And I'm, you know, one of those old school people that want to get a lot of information out of the graphs. And one of the, um, well, the greatest problems I have with Grafana is like, I have, I have a lot of information. I have a lot of, let's say, let's pick the CPU. In one single CPU graph, for one single CPU, I have like, 11, 12 data sources, and I have 96 CPUs on a single node, and it's pretty hard to get multiple instances of the same thing on the dashboard. So that's what one of the biggest problems I still have with Grafana. But, but, but what's the solution for you? Honestly, I am still using our defense. But what's, what do they provide that Grafana doesn't provide? Uh, well, it's just uh, like if you use PNP or something like that, or even something old school like Cacti, you have a template, you have um, 90 CPU, and you, s you, see, you see all of them, that's it. And um, you can make them very small, and you have, have a lot of them on a single screen. So you, know, you cannot buy me with a black dashboard with a few of the fans lined. Grafana is beautiful. It's actually, people love it. It's looking very good, but um, it's hard for me to get more information on a single page, you know? So you want to be able to have very small graphs? No, it's like just a feature just allowing me to, well, I can also scroll. It's just um, if you would allow me to say, well, I have um, kind of a template work, you know, I have, um, I need, 12 data sources for single CPU graph, and I want to see all my 96 CPUs of this node. People used to yeah, do something like this I with mean, JavaScript uh, in Grafana 3. Um, but, but, uh, but something like the templated, uh, where you can sort of select which servers you want to show, uh, and the cores. Yes, but the problem is then I have all those graphs, uh, all those lines in a single graph, and it does no longer help me. I do not see that uh, the first CPU is burning on software queues, and the others are not. But you apply, so we can apply, sort the series by max, or I mean, you can, so you get. Uh, I, I still want to see distinct graphs, you know. Um, it's no problem if you wait a lot of, of, of space, I can scroll. It's just, I want to have a chance to say, I want to have a CPU graph, but for all of them, distinct graphs, and same thing for memory. And but the, it doesn't help me to have all the data sources for just one information, like memory or CPU in a single graph. No, but you can uh, repeat for each selected uh, uh, selected variable, you can repeat a graph. Cool, how? Uh, by, by, by creating a, a variable, uh, so you can sort of specify for all, so you can get a variable for all your servers, and then you can select which one you want to show, uh, and, uh, and Grafana will re repeat that panel. Uh, so you can sort of specify f that a panel should be repeated for each variable, for each value in a variable. So this is an, uh, something that was introduced in 2.1. Um, that you can actually re repeat uh, either a row or a panel for each value in, in a metric. Um. Okay, and if I want to have multiple, uh, you know, rows in each of them, is this also possible? Uh, uh, so this is repeating uh, this panel for each value. So you could also, instead of repeating, you, you can combine repeating a panel and repeating a row if you want to sort of have, a, if you want to have a CPU, memory, and I/O and have that repeated for each sort of server, so. Well, yeah, on, on one thing, Graph, I would like to see the, the memory used for, let's say, well, cache and uh, really use memory or CPU. There's like soft error queues, there are is CPU spent in user space and, and so on. So I have a lot of lines in one single graph and I want to repeat that kind of graph. Just the single graph doesn't help me. No, but, but of course you can build, you can repeat anything that you can build. Okay, cool. Um, and of course, you can, uh, if you really have a sort of specific use cases, you can build these scripted dashboards where you actually build the dashboard dynamically, uh, which is more uh, advanced. Um, there was something I for, um, but I forgot it. Yeah, <laughs> good question, though. Uh, um, yeah, any more? Thank you. Okay. So um, no more question. Then um, maybe you can say something about authorization and permissions in Grafana. You didn't uh, mention it. Automation. 
authorization authorization yes um, yeah i mean uh, it's a um, it's a web app uh, uh, you can uh, it has a built in sort of database that where you can have users and it's also multi-tenanted, so you can actually have multiple organizations that use the same uh, Grafana instance. Uh, so uh, uh, this is using the light theme. Uh, uh, so you can uh, have, uh, in this case, I uh, have uh, multiple sort of organizations that you can switch between, and you define these data sources, and this is uh, sort of, uh, and everything you can do in Grafana, you can do uh, via the HTTP API. So you can add dashboards, add data sources, and um, uh, yeah, everything. Uh, the UI is all, all only using the, the API. Um, so uh, yeah, and, and, and for the uh, authentication, you can also sort of use uh, OAuth schemes like uh, logging with Google or with GitHub. Um, but you can also use LDAP, uh, uh, LDAP authentication. You can use uh, uh, an OAuth proxy. So if you want to have set up something, sort of handle the authentication outside Grafana, like in Apache, where you have some, maybe some um, authentication um, uh, mo uh, modules, you can uh, just send Grafana some authentication header, and it will trust that header uh, and, and uh, sign you in. Uh, Okay, thank you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I have a question. Um, is it possible to use an RRD files uh, as a data source? For example, you can run the RRD tool as a server, and when you, you start it, you can navigate through. And is it possible to use this as a backend, uh, or is it only possible to have a real uh, uh, SQL server or SQL server? There's no support for uh, SQL servers. Uh, yeah, I mean, simply, simply, you want you wrote a lot of SQL statements, select from something. Yeah, yeah that, that was InfluxDB. It looks like uh, yeah, is it, uh, InfluxDB looks like uh, SQL. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, it doesn't. Uh, well, uh, uh, there's no built-in support for RD tools. Uh, I think there are sort of s some tools out there that can sort of that have a Graphite API over RRD, or uh, they have some plugin support for Graphite that Graphite can read from RRD files. So that could be a solution, I think. Uh, um, because uh, um, there's no sort of a data source that I know of for plugin data source that sort of can speak directly with uh, RRD too. Okay, thanks. Okay, one more question. Um, hi. Uh, sorry, it's no real response, uh, no real question, but it's a more response to the former questions, to the guy with the RD question. Um, maybe you are aiming to replacing or uh, using RD from Nagios. And if you're, you're welcome to come to my talk tomorrow morning, I do something like replacing RD with InfluxDB and Grafana. And on the same hand, we have some reporting or reporting for um, the reporting uh, integrated reporting from Thruc. So, if you are interested in reports in Thruc style, you could um, get Grafana, um, Grafana graphs in Thruc reports. So, if you're familiar to that already, it feels the same like PNP for Nagios. Yeah. So, maybe the two guys it helps you. Okay. Hi. Um, question about the permissions. Uh, it's possible for me to configure different permissions, f for example, for my customers to provide access and to restrict access to just parts of the dashboards or parts of the graph. Thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, currently there are permissions for on users. Uh, so a user can... Uh, can be a viewer, an editor, or a read-only editor. Um, but the main problem is that uh, it, uh, the data sources themselves, like Graphite, InfluxDB, or OpenTSDB, they don't have any concept of permissions on a parametric basis. So if you, have, if you add a user as a viewer, 
uh, for graphite, for example, that viewer will be able to view all metrics. So even though you can, might maybe segment sort of, uh, uh, they, they will still be able to sort of, I, I, at least if they know HTTP, they will sort of look at all the queries that are going, they, they can change the queries. So Grafana that doesn't sort of validate sort of that this query, uh, uh, it, it will provide security for, if, if you use uh, uh, the data source proxy method, uh, so the data sources are actually going through Grafana, the, the data queries are going through Grafana, it will check that the, the user have access to the data source. But uh, it, there's no per metric or per query security. So for that, you have to actually use uh, a data source or segment the data sources per uh, and use uh, different organizations. So uh, there's uh, this concept of, of an organization in Grafana in that sort of uh, an organization owns the data sources and the dashboards. So you have to create multiple data sources and multiple organizations. And the data sources needs to be isolated. Um, but you can build, uh, if you have a data source that is uh, multi-tenanted, you can build the multi-tenanted sort of system uh, around Grafana. Um, but th this is a problem that, that many ha are having. Thank you. Okay. One more? Yes. Can you say something about the sizing of Grafana server? How many metrics can he handle? Uh, how many users can connect and something like that? Yeah, so um, Grafana itself uh, should scale pretty well. I mean, uh, since uh, it only prox if you use the, the, the data source, the data proxying, so the, the, the load uh, on Grafana, the backend should be very, very sort of low. So, I mean, uh, there's no heavy computation going on in the, in the, in the back end. It's just hosting uh, the dashboards uh, and the, the UI and, and HTML and JavaScript for the UI. So uh, the main scalability issue is around the data sources or the, the time series database. Uh, and uh, Graphite, which is my favorite, has some challenges in scalability uh, when, you, when you sort of reach uh, maybe uh, 200, 500,000 metrics per minute or something. <laughs> Uh, uh, people, th then you start struggling with a single server, you have to scale out uh, to multiple servers and uh, Graphite can ha have sort of be, be uh, it's, um, I mean, uh, large uh, organizations like Etsy, GitHub, uh, there are tons of big companies that scale Graphite to, to huge volumes, but uh, it requires some complicated setups. Um, but it's definitely possible. Uh, uh, but the, the, and the scalability on graphite side is mostly on the right side, not on the read side. Uh, but uh, what uh, will probably be added to Grafana in the future is, is ways to see which dashboard and which panels maybe is causing a load. Uh, because what, 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 which, which can sort of happen is that someone builds a very expensive metric query that sort of queries a thousand series or more. Uh, and have that on a high refresh rate on some, so on some TV and sort of hunting that down, who, who's sort of, who, who has that dashboard and uh, who built it and sort of getting it to sort of change can be sort of, and uh, uh, it would be cool to have Grafana sort of time that and make it easier to sort of identify which is the, which dashboard is the culprit. Uh, so yeah, yeah. But, uh, but Grafana itself, I haven't had uh, anyone sort of uh, uh, the, the only reason to run two Grafana servers is for sort of high availability and not scalability. Um, but but uh, uh, Grafana itself, um, when you install it, has very so it has no dependencies. You can sort of when you start when you download Grafana and run it, it will by default use a SQLite database, so an embedded database. Uh, that's just sort of to to have that zero dependency, easy to try try experience. Uh, but it, uh, it also supports MySQL and Postgres if you want to have sort of some more uh, more st uh, distributed storage, and if you want to, especially if you want to run Grafana in a scale, uh, scalable scenario. Thank you. And one last question. Hi. Um, you showed how to use variables inside of dashboard. That's a great feature. But is it possible to generate um, a new dashboard, let's say, for every microservice, um, for every new microservice automatically? 
uh, standard dashboard for CPU usage, etc. Um, I had a, 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 in an old version of Grafana, I had an example of a scripted dashboard that sort of saved, <laughs> that generated a bunch of dashboards and then saved them. But uh, currently, there's no way to, in, in a templated dashboard, sort of, uh, well, what, the only way to do it uh, would be to sort of, um, uh, what, Wi-Fi seems to be slow now. Uh, the only way to, to, would be to save, I mean, manually save instances, sort of go, uh, I'm not sure if I understood the question, but I, so you might uh, maybe create a, a variable with a bunch of values and you want to create different dashboards for each. We, we uh, release a new application and want to have a standard dashboard for the developers to have a look at. Uh, okay, okay. Of manual creation. So, uh, more like sort of a templated dashboard that you sort of uh, can import uh, and uh, fill in some values, and it will be sort of. So, so this is a, a really, a, one of the questions I uh, good to end on because one of the things that we want to build is uh, sort of a, a dashboard repository site, uh, like sort of Docker uh, the Hub or sort of uh, where people can upload uh, um, sort of templated dashboards. Um, so, if you're just installed Cassandra or Redis or MongoDB, and you want. You, you have CollectD and you have InfluxDB or you have Graphite. There are ready-made dashboards uh, or templated dashboards that, so that, that uh, showcase, shows sort of the, the, the most important metrics for that infrastructure or that application. Uh, instead, what, what people usually, usually do now is invest a lot of time in building these dashboards and figuring out what's the most important metrics. To have a community site where people can share dashboards and have that integrated into Grafana to make it easy to share and also maybe have a way for companies to, to create those themselves and share them internally. So yeah, that, that's something we are looking to build, a sort of Grafana.net sort of repository for dashboards. Okay. Thank you very much for your yeah. presentation.